So how do you feel about the performance tonight? It was a bloody fight out there, and you, know, you put in the work, but uh, were you satisfied with what you did? Nah. I got out there a little emotional. I didn't think it would kind of play out like that. I wasn't listening to my coaches at first, so I had to kind of dial it down on the accelerator and start listening. What, what was Tozzi in the corner that made you change up? I uh, just get back to being at range. You know, I, I'm really accurate when I'm at range and just fighting my fight. Um, dude said some some personal things about me being on juice and, and things of that nature. And the only juice I've been on is apple juice. So he uh, he had a whooping coming. Um, I'm very thankful that they took the fight. I didn't think as of last Thursday I was going to be on the card, but Joe Silva said stay ready, and that's what I did. Do you think a lot of people are going to start using that now, that, that whole little drug thing, to try to throw it at you with the juicing and, and try to get in your head? Yeah, you know, I don't mind the fans saying it because you can't reach across, fan, slap a fan or whatever, but the fighters use it. You know, I, I'm more than happy to uh, to make it a personal issue and, and, and find a reason not to like each other, to fight each other. Was there a different type of pressure coming out there tonight than a normal fight? Nah, man, I went. I, I cleared a lot of money last year at the UFC, so to start the year off working a nine to five for nine dollars an hour was a very humbling experience. Um, I might not have did nothing wrong, but I had just got in custody of my girls, and uh, you know they came from a kind of a hard life in Oklahoma, and I had to show them that just because you know I got knocked down, I couldn't stay down. I had to find a reason to keep going forward, and they were the reason. I had to show them that hard work does pay off, and when you do the right things, it, good things come from it. You went out there today and basically you laid everything on it uh, when it got in right before the finish. All the punches, the knees, everything from the clinch. And, and did you have any extra, like, I guess, fighting you coming into this one after all the things that you went through in the last fight? Um, I just want to show everybody that I am here to stay, that I do enjoy my job. I'm a fire starter. And, uh, you know, I want to come pick a fight. And that if I have to slap the dude across from me, I'm going to do just that. Uh, I enjoy what I do, and if I learned anything from losing my job and uh, getting pushed down to the bottom of a totem pole at another job, um, it, it showed me that I can't take nothing for granted, and every day is a blessing. It was supposed to fight Donald Cerrone. That fight didn't happen. How badly do you want to get that fight with him? You know, all the respect to Donald and to Team Jackson. Everyone knows that they're right across the street from our gym in Albuquerque. There's no personal vendetta to those guys. I want that fight because he shows up to fight and he tries to kick your head off. So. Um, I'm in this game to uh, to get paid. I'm a prize fighter, and I want to get paid a prize at the end of the day. So, um, if anything, I'm just I'm just happy to be back. I'm happy to be doing what I love to do. And uh, you know, I had my family. Ten years ago, I was a liar and a drug addict, and uh, or 11 years ago or whatever. So to have my family, my coaches, and my team stick beside me on this USADA deal, um, it made me feel great, man. I knew I knew I'd been doing the right things. I knew. Uh, Jeff Nowitzki is very thorough at his job and what he does. He believed me right out the gate and really pushed to ask all the right questions and got the job done for me. How much has that made you like more aware of all the different supplements that you're doing and going like literally by the book with that list that Usada has? Ah uh, man, uh, the supplement world's like Russian roulette. You know, it wasn't something I thought watching other guys that you know it was an excuse for doing steroids. You know, and then it happened to me, and of course I'm like, oh, I didn't do it. You know, so. It just showed me that, you know, I can't have an opinion on it until all the facts are played out. And that you're innocent until proven guilty crap's a lie. You're guilty until proven innocent. Um, you got your you got your mean fans on Twitter that still call me a juicer or whatever. That's cool. Like I said, if fighters want to come across and, you know, throw that blame and point those fingers or whatever, then they have a rude, a rude awakening coming. You mentioned having your girls with you now, and now you're yeah. back here and you have this UFC fight. You're coming off a big win. Um, what does it mean to you to go home to them now that you've kind of triumphed here? You know, I went from having temporary custody of my daughter Christina to uh, one day I went to go get her and they were gone. You know, I didn't have my daughter for seven years and I worked my butt off. I got out of jail. I did exactly everything I needed to do, got off probation, did everything I was supposed to do to get two feet to stand on in court. And that's exactly what I did. You don't see fathers going to court and get to take their two girls from the mother. So she was doing bad things. We proved it in court and I had both legs to stand on. I was very proud of who I was going to that courtroom. and. Uh, I was more nervous for that fight than I was for any fight in the cage, but I got my daughters. They're super happy. We're doing gymnastics. We're learning how to curl and, and paint fingernails and you name it, man. So um, I'm, very, I'm very thankful to have my family together and have them under my house and have my wing over them. I'm, I'm very thankful that they're in a safe environment. Were you, were, were you scared of going to court and going, oh, by the way, I'm a, I'm a cage fighter? I mean, how does that work? Was it or? No, they, they brought up stuff from 10 years ago, you know, and then still tried, had to do anger management classes and everything for that. But um, 
I knew I was doing the right things. I knew I didn't have nothing to hide, so I did what the judge said, and at the end of the day, they, they, they leaned in my favor. Um, I have full custody of my girls, and, and, and that's what I've been working hard to do is to get my family into my house and, and get them to where I can protect them and not have to worry, not have to not sleep at night and worry about what drug addicts were around them or what problems were around them two states over. I, I have my girls, and I'm very proud for that, and I'm going to fight my ass off to keep them. Did they watch the fight tonight? or? Uh, probably not. I don't, I don't really like them watching <laughs> Uh, they, my daughter Lily's the box and the kickboxer. She wants to be a fighter, but she needs to get an education first and not be like her dumb dad. <laughs> Do you find yourself as like a source of inspiration for other people going through hard times? Because you pulled yourself up through a lot, and that's something that a lot of people can't even say they dealt with happening, especially in the MMA. You know, I have a soft spot for the people that are addicted, um, but at some point you got to make the decision to better your own life, and you got to want to get better. And uh, if you're can't if, if you're continuing to get high and and not choose to have a better life for your kids, then you're pretty crummy in my book. So um, I just put the drugs down and moved on. I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I knew how I wanted to better myself, and I knew I wanted to be a dad. I wanted my daughters with me, and that that's been the ultimate desire. It hasn't been getting in the cage and beating people up or nothing like that. I've wanted to be a dad, and uh, I've got to do just that, and I'm getting to do that. And because of all that, is there? Does that pretty much mean that there's no opponent bigger than what you face in your past? Oh man, I've been through, I've been shot, you know, I got scars all down my legs, shot and stabbed and had all my teeth knocked in with shovels and whatever, and that's because I put myself in stupid situations. You know, uh, people could say they're a gangster or whatever it is, you know, but I was a dumbass and put myself in bad situations. And I'm just trying to show my kids and my nieces and nephews that uh, I'm not poisoning my water hole, man. I'm making sure that my family makes it and uh, I can't choose what they do when they get older as adults they're gonna have to make their own decision but I'm gonna lead them to the right path and hopefully they go down the right path. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much.